Hey everybody, Jim from Partner Engineering at Unstoppable Domains. Today I'm going to be walking you through a couple tutorials on how to integrate login with Unstoppable into your application. Timestamps are below, stay tuned through the end where I'll show you some tips and tricks for some common troubleshooting points. So what is login with Unstoppable? Well, login with Unstoppable is basically Web3 SSO. It lets users sign in using their Web3 domain and share information with applications. It also lets applications have a way to get new information about their users while still facilitating a Web3 wallet connection. This data shared can be both on-chain and off-chain. It really broadens the capabilities for dApps to get in touch with users, users to share information and get more value out of the app applications that they're integrating with. To look at an example of this, here is one of my Web3 domains. Uh, what you're looking at is basically my social profile. As you can see, I have a mix of some on-chain data, such as a linked uh, NFT that's set in my wallet. We have my domain name, we have crypto records, all of this is on-chain. We also have some off-chain data, such as some verified credentials of what social handles I've linked up and officially confirmed that I've owned. Uh, some badges, some IPFS websites, some biography information. All of this is shareable as a scope and login. So to look at an example of this, uh, in this demo application, basically what I'm going to do is show a user experience of what it's like logging in. So I'm going to log in with the same Web3 domain. And this is what we'll be integrating today. What you can see is in this pop-up, it's asking me for uh, permission to share this information with the application. Uh, it's looking for a masked email address. It's looking for my profile information, links to social media sites. And as you can see, these are all entirely opt out for the user. So I can choose what information I want to share with this app and which ones I don't want to share. Final step of login is just confirming the transaction. This is just signing a message to prove that you are in fact the owner of this domain. You can't just sign in with any domain. So I'm gonna sign with the wallet that owns it. And now what you're going to see is all this information is shared with the application. And just to kind of summarize it right here, you can see all that information that I pointed to in my uh, social profile is all shared in here with the app. The app can use this information to customize the experience for the user, and the user has the ability to revoke access to this information at any point in time, so it's a true win-win for both the user and the application. So let's go through a tutorial of integrating Login with Unstoppable. Uh, with Login with Unstoppable, we have quite a few integration methods. Uh, what I'm gonna be using right now is just the bare bones framework. It's called Login with Popup. It's basically a call right to our JavaScript library itself. Uh, I'm going to map it just to a ba very basic bu uh, button. And then what we're going to do is show what how you can access the information, how you can integrate it in. So uh, as you can see here, I have a very basic uh, React app. All I've really done is added in a couple buttons. As you can see right now, these buttons do nothing. And what we're going to be doing is just hooking up our login and log out features into each of these buttons. Uh, I'm going to be following along for the most part in our documentation with this login with pop-up, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. So first things first, uh, our login uses the UAuth.js library under the hood. So I'm going to go and I'm going to install that into my projects directory. That will only take a second. And now we're all set to begin. The next thing we want to do is start setting up a client. It's uh, this client is what is going to uh, OpenID flow is going to connect to on the server side. So we need to know where our DAP is requesting information from. So what I'm going to do is go over to our developer dashboard. And I'll show you, it looks like this when you first log in. Uh, I'm going to connect my wallet and sign in. Of course, I could log in with Unstoppable here as well, but I'm just going to be using my MetaMask for the sake of simplicity right now. And what we're going to do is create a new client. So it's simple enough, we're gonna create a client. I'm just gonna call this Jim's demo for right now. And what this client is basically going to do is this is where we're gonna be able to create a client ID, set our redirect URIs and change our scopes around. So I'm just gonna save my changes. Uh, important to note, this redirect URI where you set it in here, it's very important that this redirect URI is an exact string match to the redirect URL that you're going back to upon successful login. Uh, I can touch more on it later, but basically if you're using a different port or you're using a different host or whatever it might be, the, 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 there's gonna be some issues with the redirection because it's looking for that specific string. So I'm going to be running this on localhost port 3000, so it's, uh, this will work for me, but if I was running it on a different port, 
I would add in localhost comma that port, or if I was running this in production, I would add in the production server URL. But now that I have this and this is all ready, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy my client config configuration and this is what we're going to use in our file. So going back to our code, again, this is our uh, very basic boilerplate app. And this is what that whole uh, React modal looks like right now. Uh, I just have a couple buttons, very basic. And again, we're going to start populating these out. So first thing we want to do, of course, is import our library. So that's going to be import UAuth, capital A, from UAuthJS. Very good. And now what we need to do is create our UAuth instance. So we're going to const UAuth equals new UAuth. And this is where that client configuration comes in. So that data that I just copied. I'm just pasting that right in there. And as you can see, this is it, just telling us that this is going to be the client ID, this is the redirect URI, and these are the scopes we're going to use. We'll come back more on that now. So that's all good. Now, quite simply, the next thing we need to do is just uh, set up login. For the sake of right now, what I'm going to do is just uh, call our login function and print out the results to console just so you can see what it looks like. So. When the button is clicked, it's going to call this login button. And pretty much all it is, is we call our UAuth object and we're just doing login with pop-up. And that'll handle the whole thing, pretty much that one line of code. Now, this is an async function. So just for printing it out, what I'm going to do is grab the authorization And I'm going to just map this out into a function. And we're going to console.log authorization. Cool. So now let's see this in action. So I'm going to hit the login button. Now this is that modal again. This is what I was talking about. This is basically what the library is doing. Uh, it detected one of the one of my domains in my wallet. This is the one I'm going to sign in with. So it's giving me information about what re, uh, what scopes is requesting. Again, this is all handled within the library. Notice I didn't have to configure any of that in this app. So now I'm going to sign the transaction to sign in. And you can see the data. So now this is all accessible to the app. So uh, the subject here is my domain name. You can also see my wallet address. So all of that is now accessible by the DAP. And quite simply for logout, it, unsurprisingly, it's uauth.logout. Now, you normally be setting these all to state variables, handling them like that. So this logout button isn't going to do anything right now other than call the library and revoke access. But basically, uh, you'd be handling it in your app in that way. So let's just say we want to add one more scope. Uh, there's a long list of scopes that you can find in our documentation. But for right now, I'm going to say, let's just add a social scope and let's make it optional. So the name of the scope is social. I'm going to make it optional. I'm adding that again into my configuration down here uh, in the code itself. And that's about it. So now let's go back to the uh, app again. Now, when I hit login, what you'll see is this new scope. View links to your social media sites. And again, it's optional. So as a user, I can choose that I don't want to share that information with this app. For right now, I will. And again, I'm going to sign the transaction to sign in. And now what you can see in the data returned, there's some of my social information. You can see uh, what my Telegram handle is, Twitter handle, Discord handle. So maybe if you need to connect with users through that way, you can. Uh, you can also see verification statuses. So this user has verified their Discord handle. So this is a, an authenticated Discord endpoint. Whereas this Telegram handle, they did not verify, so it's just a t uh, just basically text that they entered, and it gives you that ability to get that level of data from your user. Now let's cover a demo using Login with Unstoppable with the Web3 React framework. Web3 React is a common framework that's used for uh, injecting wallets into applications, and you can use the Login with Unstoppable UAuth instance as one of those connectors. So again, here you can see a very basic demo app. 
uh, might be some uh, component that lives inside your application that has a, hey, connect your wallet, have some of the usual suspects. Here, if I like click on MetaMask, you'll see MetaMask will come up to connect. And what we want to achieve here is adding in login with Unstoppable as another option. So looking at our code, again, very basic function, and it might look something like this. I, I have things a little more hard-coded for the sake of uh, demoing it. But what we basically want to wind up doing is adding a fifth button uh, that is the login with Unstoppable. So first things first, we need to go over and add it to our connectors. Uh, just like before, uh, I've already installed the UAuth library and I'm importing my UAuth connector from that. Now, uh, to create the connector, first thing I need to do is create a login client. So I'm gonna go back to my web browser. I'm gonna go to my dashboard. I'm gonna connect up. And I'm going to create a new client. So I'm gonna call this one Jim's Web3 React demo. And again, like before, uh, I'm just going to set some basic scopes. So we're going to just use open ID and wallet for right now. And uh, just like before, this redirect URI is super important. If I was running this on a different port, if I was running this on a different server, I would need to make sure I add those in here, delete them. Uh, it's very important that it is a string for string, character for character match. Uh, it's, I can't just use like a, uh, the same local host and assume all ports will work. So here, like I said, I am running this on port 3000, so I can leave this all like this. And now I'm gonna copy uh, this configuration over because I'm gonna need it in a bit. So I'm gonna go over to my connectors file and uh, I already have my uh, UAuth connector uh, imported, which is good. So now I wanna make a UAuth connector. So. This is all, I'm just following along in our documentation here in the other screen, but basically I'm going to create a new UAuth connector. This is going to have the data I, I sent over from, uh, I copied over from there. And then I also need to add in the injected connectors. It's going to be injected and wallet connect and then in the uh, connectors that we export we're just going to add uauth as one of these objects and now uh, back over here quite simply we're just going to add this fifth button now so again just for the sake of demoing uh, what i've done already is i've made a new css class for this just to call it ud and here we're gonna be calling UAuth. And now if we go back over to our demo app, we can see the uh, unstoppable button's been added. Again, much like before, we still have our old options, but now we have access to login with unstoppable with it. Uh, and just like all the other options, what's going to happen is when we log in with this, we're going to be able to connect up a wallet and we're gonna be able to have that connection, so now we are still connected, but much like before, all the uh, data, that, all the scopes that were asked for, all the claims, social handles, masked email addresses, on-chain data, off-chain data, that's all made accessible to the application as well. So here the user can still sign in with a the wallet, they can still connect up with a wallet, it's just using the Web3 React framework. If you did have your app built like this, it's pretty much just those few lines of code, one more button, and then everything's all set. Now I'd like to give you some tips and tricks for troubleshootings. Uh, uh, this is something I've seen come up quite a bit and it almost entirely revolves around the how we handle the redirect URI. So again, basically uh, we're gonna look at this very basic demo app and I'm gonna show you a few of the common scenarios I see. So here I'm running on port 3001. Uh, I've gone and I've installed everything more or less as we used in uh, the earlier demo and we're gonna go and test it. So we hit login. Everything seems good. It's asking me for my domain. We're going in or signing in. And now we get this local host refuse to connect. Uh, what's going on here, and you can see this from the URL, is it's trying to redirect to port 3000, but we're actually running on port 3001. So there's a mismatch in ports. The redirect URI doesn't know how to handle that. Okay, so straightforward enough. 
So let's go to our code and let's just change this to port 3001. Now let's see what happens. I go and I hit login and now we get an invalid request. Uh, that might seem confusing at first because we're running on port 3001. We have our configuration set to port 3001, but the part that's missing here is we didn't set that on the server side. So we go back to our dashboard where we have our login client. Here, as we see, we only have port 3000 added. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 3001. And we'll make our changes. And now when we go and we log in, now we see that it didn't throw that error. And when we go and we actually sign in, you'll see a successful sign in, no more errors. Again, so it's very important that uh, the redirect URIs are exactly matching what, uh, what is on the host, uh, port for port, line for line, and that those settings are reflected both in the UAuth dashboard as well as in the code configuration itself.